Joseph, the man, the myth, the legend. What an Fellas. eight crazy Fellas. years this been. Fellas. <laughs> How's it going today? <laughs> so good. I, I really am. I can't even express to you how excited I am. The buzz is so evident and present here in New York City and all over the country. And, and man, the, the friggin' world, 178 yeah. countries are going to see this show. And I, it just seems like the audience is chomping at the bit. And we said we waited long enough. So now that it's here, I, I couldn't be more excited. My guy, my guy. Now, you know, watching this episode, I was like, what's up with all the Boston slander? I mean, you couldn't be more New York than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> so, you know, initially I was going to say, well, what's up with that? But then I thought about it. I was like, it's power. Lines are never this throwaway line. Just always something with it. So I wanted to ask you here. I started to put a little research together. You think there's any connection with the Flynn's and the Egan family or even possibly the Teresi side? I mean, if you know a little well, bit about gangsters. History, uh-huh i think nigeria think about... i think nigeria is a real storyteller here man and maybe a conspiracy <laughs> theory i'm not sure <laughs> but Listen. um yeah you know i think i think that the boston thing part of it is just it really is as simple as a miscommunication when um people are outside like when people from new york who are my complexion with blonde hair i think that people often just say it's really judging a book by its cover rather than really taking the time to listen where it's like all right it's an urban sound it's it, he's white and he's super white it's probably boston you know what i mean so <laughs> this irish guy i think it's just making those those stupid assumptions i think it's a reflection of the stupidity of the character of simon in some ways played brilliantly by phil donlin who is the muscle um mm -hmm. of the flynn uh, family in a lot of ways but i think that that was it and man those those poor disses on tom brady man i mean come on hey. give this guy some credit he's one of the greatest <laughs> of all time <laughs> The world now, <laughs> now, Joseph, I have to ask, with the beginning of this episode, with the reintroduction of Tommy, we don't we don't get to see Tommy emotional a lot in, mm -hmm. in the power universe. How did it feel setting up this scene with that reflective emotional Tommy as he's just going through everything that he's been through so far? Lucas, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, that's one of my favorite parts about the entire pilot. And I think that the director, Larissa Kondraki, who had uh, directed in the Power Show as well, mm -hmm. she just allowed that first two minutes to be no dialogue. It's yes. just how, and yet somehow, um, you know exactly what Tommy's feeling and thinking. It's as if mm -hmm. he was giving a monologue, but it's just yep. him sitting yes. with his emotions because what's reflected in that time is the loss of his brother, Ghost. Yes. The mm -hmm. loss of the love of his life, Lakeisha, who he wanted to, to be his bride, and the family that he was trying to build with her in cash. The loss of Tariq and Tasha, who have turned their back on him, and the loss of his mother, who has disowned him, who, st yes. who still believes he was responsible for Ghost's murder. Not to mention the loss of the Italian mob being against him, the Serbs being against him, the Tejadas being against him. All of New York City is not, like, that's his heart blood. I mean, he is yes. so, like Najir said, like, he, like, New York is his blood and his skin yes. and his heart. So, to, and to say, you can never go home again. It doesn't exist for you anymore. He's feeling that, like, what, who am I? And yeah. Chicago, in a weird way, the place as a fish out of water will actually show Tommy who he really is. Mm -hmm. Really quickly on our last question here. I mean, that's that's a tremendous answer. And I and I wanted to ask with so much tragedy and loss, you know, is Tommy now being out on his own, wanting and commanding to be his own boss? Is this truly his first opportunity of doing so? And is this considered therapeutic in a sense for him? Man, tell me we get more than four minutes. You guys are asking the best questions. Uh, <laughs> Literally, I think in some ways it is, but along some ways there's that serendipity because uh, Tommy is two parts Kane and two parts ghost. So he's, he's, he's banging, he's bopping, he's mm -hmm. taking every by the block, but he's now thinking two steps ahead. So we have this Tommy who's the same Tommy ready to throw down at the throw down, but, it, but it also with the hesitancy of being in that new city. So he is now a slightly more thinking guy than we've had before because he has mm -hmm. to be because ultimately whether it's the the heart or the head tommy's a survivor he'll chew if he gets caught in that trap he'll chew off his arm to, to survive so we see a survivor who now truly has to survive in these situations man yeah unfortunately we only got four <laughs> minutes so gotta come back let's do it again, to do this again. Go. Hey, after, after the, but seriously when what after this the season or whatever hit up stars let's i would love to talk to you guys again my guy, uh, my guy. Yes. 
Yeah, well, in the meantime, hope you have a good rest of your day. And man, I can't wait for folks to check it out. This is it's going ooh, great. This is Thank you, fellas. The best spin off for sure. Yeah, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, that. Joseph, you have a good one, brother. And thank All you right, so much. Good to see you guys. Thank you.